G'day, mate. Um, so this is my friend Mark. I always trust his opinion. That's a big mold. A lot of tape. Yeah, I made a mold out of my workbench. That's a lot of epoxy and... Yeah, and... A lot of pallet blocks, mate. But hey, come on, Mark. Will it work? From the past, I would say... Maybe? This project started as most projects, with my wife asking me to get rid of a bunch of really old pallets and also do something about my office situation. I got the more or less brilliant idea to make myself a new desk. And while I was sawing down the old stack of pallets, I also got another idea that I'll get to in a moment. I would like to be able to stand up at my future desk, so I remembered that I got an email from a company that makes height adjustable legs. I called them and I sold the idea that I was making a beautiful walnut and black epoxy table video. <laughs> They were absolutely game and sent over not just one, but two sets of height adjustable legs. Did you know that the characters in Winnie the Pooh are based on psychological disorders? I wonder what kind of disorder I suffer from because I continued on this path and I called my epoxy resin supplier and told them the exact same story. Apparently walnut and black epoxy is a magic key that opens doors, because shortly after I had 39 kilos of deep poor resin standing in my workshop, the reality of my project started to dawn on me finally. And I remember I helped a family member saw up a walnut lock a few years back. Maybe there's a chance I can get some of the leftover pieces. And to my luck, I got away with a few smaller chunks, not exactly a big walnut disc yet. So I'll have to get creative. I started making the form for the desk. The general advice is using melamine boards, but I looked at the prices and thought, geez, Luis, there's gotta be a cheaper way to make a form. So I went looking around the house and I found some plywood sheets. I realized I might not have enough wood in this full sheet of ply, so I got an idea that would make any professional woodworker cry. What if the top of my workbench could be the bottom of the form? I realized it was kind of a gamble, but at the moment I felt a bit like Chigger. <laughs> Who would likely dive headfirst into a project like this, perhaps without fully considering the potential challenges ahead. So off I went, transforming my hardy workbench into a questionable epoxy mold. I cut plywood sides, and then I got going with some cork to fill up all the small screw holes in the bench top. I then covered the whole surface with tape, because tape with release agent on is apparently the best way to be able to separate the form from the cured epoxy. Guess I'll see you later. To make the form completely leak-proof, I put cork between all the boards when I assembled them. I also put cork at the bottom surface before pressing it down on the tabletop. I also corked all the inside seams and also all the outside seams. And I left the cork to dry for a few days. If this thing leaks, I'll have epoxy in all my routers and bits in all the drawers below. Suddenly I got this visitor. I guess word got out in the 100 acre woods about a honey-like substance being used. Sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Bumblebee, but you are too early for the Rubio Monaco treatment. Once the foam was spotless, I coated it with mold release. A brainwave struck me while I was dismantling those old pallets. My friends call me the Danish Pallet Viking, and I never really got to be a fan of conventional river tables. I'm not just going to copy Blacktail Studios walnut and black epoxy style. So why not fuse my pallet wizardry with a fresh take on the river table? I guess this is where the idea of the Pallet Blocks River Table was born. Pallet Block River Table? Yes. That has got to be the worst idea I have ever heard of. I think I may have caught James on the wrong day here. But of course, I started doubting my own idea. To add to the predicament, I've pitched the project to sponsors as a walnut and black epoxy table. That's quite a departure from pallet blocks, wouldn't you say? I'm also getting the few walnut pieces I was able to source out in the open too. And just as I was mulling over my material choices, my deep pour epoxy from Epodex arrived. Well, there are a few puzzle pieces I'll have to maneuver into place, and that needs to happen pronto. And so, the adventure begins. The very 
first step of this adventure is getting the nails out of the pallet blocks. I could try and leave them inside, but that would just leave me very worried every time. I need to cut it, route it, or flatten it. So unfortunately, there is no way around dismantling the blocks, pulling the nails out, and gluing them back together. I wonder if there's a market for nail-free pallets. <laughs> Then I need to figure out how to use the walnut chunks in the table. I could combine walnut and pallet blocks and somehow make a pallet blocks river table. Perhaps where the blocks are the river. I haven't seen anybody make a pallet blocks river table and I'm pretty sure it will disturb a lot of people. Good. So I started the long and tiring process of making the walnut slabs fit into the form. That required sawing off one side measuring and calculating. Did I say I hate doing math? After all this cutting, measuring and especially my lack of math, you might be wondering how I got to this point in my woodworking journey. Well, I'm a self-taught woodworker, videographer and entrepreneur. And a big part of my self-guided education has come from Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes on a myriad of topics. I have taken some amazing video editing classes. I'm going to show you some editing techniques that will optimize your editing. That have not only helped improve the quality of my videos, but also streamlined my editing process. That it's as fast as possible. Being self-employed, it is crucial to continue learning and growing. And Skillshare offers the resources and the community to help me do just that. Whether you are interested in starting your own YouTube channel, improving your woodworking skills, or even learning design or managing your own business, I highly recommend checking out Skillshare. Skillshare is giving the first 1000 of my subscribers who click the link in the description a one month free trial of Skillshare, so you can start exploring your creativity today. Another job is getting back and the cambium layer off with a wire brush. There were also some knots and some soft spots that I've removed with a chisel. If I leave these, they will cause issues when the table gets older, so it is best to remove them and fill the voids with epoxy. I did spend a lot of time fiddling the rest of the wood into the form, cutting blocks to size, thinking about layout, rearranging, but at some point I figured this is the design I'm going with. I have made the perfect pallet river table, the perfect clone between a traditional river table and my pallet box coffee table. What could possibly go wrong? You know, wood floats in liquids, so it is necessary to keep the wood down when pouring epoxy. Somebody suggested in the comments of one of my last videos that I could just pour a thin layer of epoxy at the bottom and let it cure, and it would hold down the wood. Brilliant. So I tried that, but I must have been a little too impatient, because after... <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. I also got a notification on YouTube Somebody I don't know tagged me in their video. Better check it out. After a few days, I figured the wood was pretty much stuck in the form, so I started mixing up epoxy. I mixed four cans of deep pour epoxy from Epodex. This is the version that can cure in one layer up to 10 centimeters in thickness. I have been using Epodex for my previous projects with great success and I'm excited to see how it performs in this application. So I mixed epoxy and poured and mixed and poured epoxy. And I finally got a moment to see who tagged me in the video. Speaking of hilarious, uh, hilarious, creative and an excellent, excellent woodworker, uh, Jesper. It was about the time I realized that this guy was talking about me that I also realized that a few of my wood blocks were just floating around. Uh, just my goodness. It's not just a few blocks. Jesper makes, uh, please. They are all breaking loose. This guy, the stuff... It, it, I didn't wait long enough. I just encourage you to check out some of his videos. No, 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 no. All the wood is floating. And he does stuff and I think, uh, just... I couldn't even begin right now to try to do that. 
but I'm having a great time watching him do it. At this point, I was so desperate, I gave up filming. But I still had the GoPro on time-lapse over my workbench. The man who said all those nice things about me is Tim Stark. He also makes woodworking videos just like me. And suddenly, I realized that it is not just my sponsors who will see this project and hate it. Tim will see it too. And I would hate to disappoint someone as nice as Tim Stark. So I'm really starting to fear the ending of this video. And I'm also developing a solid fear of publishing. I'm trying to get my mind away from the disaster of a project that is curing in my workshop. The piglet in me still worried about this being a total giant failure. But in a way, this whole journey, even with its ups and downs, is what makes me what I am. And if I'm just listening to the little piglet voice inside me that says, I'll try again tomorrow, maybe it will all be okay somehow. So I'm trusting that little bit of courage I can muster and start taking the old desk apart. I'm also having a good look at the wooden floors made from pine planks. They are really in a bad condition in many spots. So this little piglet grabbed the sander and got to work. I know I could get a bigger tool to sand the floor with, but this is what I have and since I'm working indoors, it's really important not to make too much dust. At least that's what my wife told me. My mind also started wondering what I could create with the wood from the dismantled desk. I can't quite recall its species. It has been quite some time since I bought these tabletops. But the folks at Flexispot were generous enough to send over two different styles of height adjustable legs. I'm slowly getting into more of a jigger mood and I have a hunch that I could craft something extraordinary for that second pair of legs. The pallet block tabletop worst idea ever is still drying and I test rubia monocot oils on my freshly sanded floor. The pine's natural yellow is kinda beautiful, but a bit too bright yellow for me. After trying 10 different shades, I and when I say I, I mean my wife picked natural. It is subtle grey brown with the knots and dark areas deepening beautifully. So while we wait for the natural oil to show up, there is a little time to look at the Flexispot legs. These are their best-selling legs and the box is really heavy and needs two people to move it around. That is, unless you are a 2 meter tall, 100 kilo heavy Viking of course. But once the box is open, the assembly process is quite straightforward. I do spend a lot of time at the desk editing video and I'm really looking forward to being able to shift between sitting and standing. The instructions are easy to follow and all the necessary hardware is included. Once the base is assembled, I attach the control box and connect the wires from the legs to the control unit. This is where you're supposed to attach the legs to the tabletop while laying upside down. But as you know my tabletops are not quite ready yet. But I can test if the up and down thing works. Wow, that's that's really high <laughs> and really low. Rivers know this, there is no hurry. We shall get there someday. But sadly, my sponsors haven't quite embraced this poo philosophy. After I have been crossing all previous deadlines, I just agreed to have the video ready within 10 days. With that deadline in mind, I think I better get into the workshop. So I was liberating my improvised hold down clamps that were epoxied down to the table. And it was a pretty rough process to say the least. But with the table finally free, I mix up some more epoxy to fill up the remaining centimeters of the table and the knot holes. The only problem with that is that it will need to cure for another 5 days. So I can't help but worry that this 10 day deadline might get me into trouble. This model with four legs will be the future base under my pallet river table. 
but I'm still waiting for it to cure, so I'll need to continue renovating the floor while I'm waiting. Luckily, I'm able to sand the test colors back and I'm preparing the floor with some wood prep from Rubio Monaco. It is late night and I'm hoping to be able to put on the oil plus 2 sieve natural tomorrow. The next morning the sun is shining and it is another chance to show off how stupid I am. The oil and the bee component comes in two different cans, naturally. And apparently it is difficult for this DIYer to get the cans separated. The mixing cup makes it a no-brainer to get the mixing ratio right, so what could possibly go wrong? I'll see myself out. is curing and the pallet blocks river table has also cured so it is finally time to flatten it i'm using a thing called a slap matrix it's basically an xy slider that allows my router to slide around at the same level over a large surface i'm using a huge flattening bit and i also remember to put new filters on my face mask this type filters out even the smallest particles. Flattening with a router is really dirty work, but it is also here the look of the table will be revealed, finally. After flattening, sanding and hiding mistakes with a black marker, <laughs> I'm in a hurry you know, it is time for the most satisfying part of the whole project, putting the finish on the table. For the finish I'm using Rubia Monaco's Oil Plus 2 Sieve in the pure color. This product is essentially the same one as I used on the floor, but the pure variant is transparent and only highlights the wood's natural colors without altering the tone. It's a two component finish that helps the oil cure faster. I always begin with finishing the underside of the table. Once that's done, I turn it over to apply the finish to the top. Using a piece of wood or whatever I got laying around, I distribute the oil across the entire surface, making sure to cover every inch centimeter. Shortly after applying the oil, I take a cloth and begin to wipe off the excess. As the first cloth becomes saturated and has been used on the entire table, I switch to a fresh one, wiping the surface one more time. This extra step helps ensure a perfectly smooth finish. The curing process is really fast, taking just 24 to 48 hours to completely harden. That's incredibly convenient for me as I'm only a few days and hours away from my deadline. I did put a little video of the finishing process out on Instagram and I got a message from a guy who calls himself Bourbon Moth or something like that. Is that a river table? But I'm honestly in such a hurry to meet my deadline, I'll have to watch his message later. Oh, I totally forgot. I have two table bases and I still have the second tabletop to go. My plan is to make some kind of workbench out of the old tabletop and indoor workbench for my office. Height adjustable. 
I have this idea that there should be both horizontal and vertical work surfaces, and it should be full of dark holes, so I can make or buy all kinds of hold down tools and other stuff that fits into dark holes. I use the Fast Tool Domino to join all the pieces together, and the only thing holding this together is dominoes and wood glue. I sand it down to 150 grit, remove all the dust with raw wood cleaner, and give it a good massage with Rubia Monocoat Oil plus 2C Pure. While the workbench dries, we carry the tabletop inside and I think about the message I got from the bourbon guy. I'm sure he's an epoxy and river table fan who just wants to congratulate me on my pallet river table. And suddenly, I'm not so scared of what the sponsors will say. After this journey filled with Tigger optimism, Piglet anxiety, Wright appeared with some AR depression, and some would say some of Robin's delusional thinking. I just realized that I didn't build this alone. I had chats and encouragements from friends and family, and I had people lifting me up when I was down. I had Mark Dana, <laughs> James Finger, and many other woodworking friends like Tim Stark cheering me up along the way. I also had some awesome sponsors, and I would like to thank FlexiSpot for their awesome table bases. And I can honestly say they work above my expectation. Also, Epodex for the epoxy and Rubio Monocoat for the wood finish. And a big thank you to Skillshare for being an awesome sponsor of the video. And to everybody for accepting that I kept delaying the premiere of the video. I have links for friends and sponsors in the description. Please go and check them out. Oh yeah, and the message from the bourbon guy? I may have gotten a new friend. What the heck is that? Is that a river table? Ugh! What is with these flippin' pallets too? Oh my gosh! I don't know who this Jasper Makes guy is, but Jasper makes some Ugly flipping stuff. Lights will guide you home and ignite your bones, and I will try.